All right, we're a little bit late starting this video. Um, I started building a ballast box for the back of the tractor, and uh, this is the frame for it right here. And uh, I didn't really want to record a bunch of welding stuff. And you know, if if, uh, if you want to learn how to weld, there's plenty of other YouTubers out here that that uh, teach welding. You know, you got Chucky 2009, I think is the screen name. Um, you got Jody over at WeldingTricksAndTips.com, and, and um, I'm definitely not a welder, so I would not insult um, a, a real welder that's actually welds for a living every day and makes his living at it. I wouldn't insult one by saying that I am a welder because I'm pretty much just a backyard hack when it comes to welding. But I know enough to get by and, you know, do uh, do things that I'm comfortable doing. With that said, if you want to learn to weld or teach yourself to weld, this is a pretty good project if you own a tractor. Anyway, just wanted to give you some of the rough dimensions of what we're building here. Basically, this is going to be a weight box. I'm going to fill the inside of this with concrete. We came up with some measurements. It's going to be 12 inches roughly this way was my rough measurement. And it ended up being about 13 inches. So nothing's written in stone when, when, I, when, 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 uh, when I build something like this. It's kind of, you know, it is what it is. We, we cut 12 inch lengths here and by the time we added these pieces on the outside here, that added to it, we got 13 inches on the inside. This way, we're going to go 36 inches or 3 foot. And the reason that I decided to do that was because I wanted a, a different type of setup as far as for attaching this to the back of the tractor. One of the important factors and building this weight box was I wanted to have a receiver on it so that I could put a, a ball hitch in here and move some trailers around and uh, various things like that while I had the weight box on the back. In particular, um, when I'm when I'm towing my log splitter to the site where I'm going to split wood, uh, typically what I'll do is I'll put the log splitter on the back of the tractor and I'll drive to wherever it is that I'm going to split the wood at and generally I'll split it right where I'm cutting it and so I'll take the chainsaw and I'll cut it up and I'll split it and the log splitter gets unhooked from the back of the tractor and then I fill the bucket up with, with wood and then take it back up to the house. Well when you do that the back of the tractor is light and you got a lot of weight in the front end of the bucket. so. This is going to uh, make it so that I have some weight on the back of the tractor and I have a means to tow my uh, little log splitter over there. And uh, so uh, that's kind of what that's kind of what brought this project uh, about. That and the fact that um, if I'm doing a, a lot of loader work where I'm moving a lot of dirt, you know, piles of dirt from one place to the other, the box blade on the back is a pretty good weight on the back, but it's really not quite enough in my opinion. A box blade generally weighs somewhere anywhere between 400 and 600 pounds, um, depending on the manufacturer, uh, thickness of steel, that type of thing. When we get finished with this uh, weight box right here, it's going to weigh close to a thousand pounds. It'll actually, it'll be under a thousand pounds, uh, but basically because I'm kind of cutting some of the weight back. But anyway, the receiver was an important factor that I wanted. Um, like I said, we've got three foot wide here, we've got two foot high, and we went 12 inches deep. This ended up being 13. This ended up being 36, 3 foot. This ended up being 24 and a half inches. 
we got a receiver hitch on the front. I'm gonna take you around the back and show you what we did as far as for getting it ready for hooking up on the truck. Okay, so we're on the back side and hopefully this is showing up okay. It's a little bit early in the morning and the sun is coming up from over on this side over here. So it's kind of kind of a little bit bright over here. But anyway, this piece right here is going to be for our top link hookup. We're going to hook up right here. We'll just use two pieces of angle iron up here. And uh, this angle iron is four inch by four inch. Everything on this is quarter inch thick. So all the angle iron is quarter inch thick. By the time we get done with this thing, uh, steel wise, we're going to be looking at 100 pounds in steel, uh, maybe a little bit more, uh, but right around 100 pounds in steel. So we just weld this on here, that's where the top link's going to come. Now, earlier I was talking about that I, I decided to make this 36 inches this way wide, and the reason for that is I didn't want pins sticking out on the end to hook the three-point onto. I wanted to be able to slide my three-point up into here like this and um, and then put you know put the pin through like that right there. This is a little bit easier you know hooking up uh, when, you, when you've got it when you've got it pinned like this and it's a little bit stronger too when you got two pieces like this. So, we just used a uh, piece of angle iron here and just cut some tabs off. Now, you know, basically these right here are two and a half inches. They hang down a little bit and up a little bit right here. Um, and uh, let's see, I believe it was uh, what we was using here was three and a half by four inch angle iron here. Um, quarter inch thick. All this framing here is quarter inch thick, two inch by two inch angle iron. Um, welded it together and um, used a pretty easy rod to weld with. Um, if, you're, if you're new to stick welding, I highly recommend a 7014 rod. It's probably one of the easiest rods there is to weld with. Um, it does lack a little bit in penetration. It does not penetrate the metal uh, as aggressively as, you know, like 6013, 6011 or something like that. Um, but it, it, it makes a relatively nice finish weld. And um, if you, you know, if you, uh, once you get the hang of it, you, you know, I make multiple passes with it. I don't try to do everything in one pass. I make multiple passes with it, and I've had pretty decent luck with a 7014, and it's not hard to hold an arc with a 7014. So when you're first learning how to weld, you know, holding an arc is, um, you know, that's what you're trying to do. So um, they're pretty easy to start, and they're pretty easy to hold an arc with, and uh, they lay down a pretty decent bead for, you know, a beginner or a backyard kind of guy like me. So, um, anyway, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to learn how to do. Like I said, if I, if I welded every, the, more, the longer I weld, by the time I get to the end of this project welding, I've been welding like a champ, you know. But uh, when you don't weld every day, you know, hey, it is what it is. So the next thing that I, I, I'm thinking that I want to do with this uh, box before I put the concrete in it is I'm thinking about adding some tubing in here that I can put my rake, shovel, and that type of thing into the back of the box and haul it around on the back of the tractor. So um, if i um, got this on the back and I'm towing my leaf vacuum on the back of here with the trailer hitch, then I can put my rakes and my shovels and uh, maybe a, a you know a grubbing hoe or whatever Maddox. I can stick that in there and just kind of tote it around with me behind the tractor. So um, I put these pieces of rebar in here 
I got one coming from this corner up to this corner, and then I got another one coming from the top corner on that side down to the bottom corner over here. And what that's going to do, that's going to serve two purposes. It's going to add a little bit of strength to the concrete to keep it from cracking. And I'm going to use this to tie off my tubing that I'm going to insert into the concrete and um, hold it in place until I can pour, get the concrete poured. So let's get started on that.